Welcome to the Life's Best Medicine podcast, where we are finding hope and healing one episode at a time. No appointment needed, no rubber gloves, and no coping. Just a healthy dose of life lessons to help equip you for this wild journey we call life. Hey everyone, this is a friendly reminder that we are here for entertainment purposes only. We may not even be that entertaining at times, but this is not medical advice. You know, talk to your doctor, check with your healthcare professionals uh, before making any lifestyle changes or, you know, medicine changes. What we're talking about is our clinical experience and what we've seen. And so if you really want our advice, you can consult us. You can actually consult me as a doctor, or you can consult my guest and, uh, and get all your questions answered, but we can't give free medical advice because we can't pay our bills with that, but we can help to educate you a bit and allow you to think a little bit and always reach out to your medical professional before making any lifestyle changes. Thank you. Hey everyone, we made it to July. Boy, this year's flying by and you know, the holidays are going to sneak up on us pretty soon. So we're going to enjoy the heat while we can in the summer here. So hopefully you're having a great summer and uh, that you've been preparing and getting ready for summer so that you can go out there in your your uh, summer clothes and feel good about yourself. So anyways, I want to thank my sponsors, Health Code. Uh, they're doing some great work. Uh, Dr. Bickman, we, uh, hopefully people can go back and listen to Joel Bickman. I got to interview him at length about how they started the company and what their goals are. But they're doing some great work. And, uh, you know, I would definitely recommend going to their website. They have a ton of recipes and, and information and, and uh, uh, reports that Dr. Bickman has written. That there's some great education there. So I'm so happy that they're sponsoring us. Plus, they have some great uh, treats there, recipes, and uh, shakes, uh, whatever you need to get you through the summer to keep you cool. Uh, also, Keto Mojo, uh, you know, they came out with a new device uh, in the last year or two uh, that, that measures the GKI glucose ketone index. And I thought that was just kind of hype, but there's a lot of data coming back about how helpful that is uh, in finding cancer and going through chemotherapy. Dr. Seafried has been talking about it. So I've been paying a lot more attention. So if you're worried about your health, check that uh, Keto Mojo, uh, Keto Mojo, Keto Dash Mojo.com. Um, really good information. And they have an app that you can track all your ketones and sugar levels to make sure you're you're on track. And so I'm very appreciative of them sponsoring this podcast. Um, so go out and buy their stuff. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Low Carb MD and the Life's Best Medicine podcast because I have a big guest here, Doug Reynolds. He's running all kinds of stuff, man. He's got low carb, low, low carb USA. He's doing the symposium for metabolic health in, in San Diego symposium. Uh, awesome stuff. He's pulled so many people from so many areas. And I'll tell you, his conference is what really started making me think about metabolic health and, and low carb and, and the, the impact we can have on each other and community and, and our patients. So Doug Reynolds, welcome. Hey, so awesome man, to thanks. have you, man. Yeah, thank you. It's been a pleasure to be here. You've been a busy guy. I have, yeah. So, um, and we were talking off air about this fact that, um, you know, we started Low Carb USA eight years ago now. Um, 2016 was our first was our first event, and um, it's evolved into something way way bigger than than we ever imagined it would. It would. Um, and one of the things that's evolved out of that is the, is the creation of the nonprofit called the Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners, which is there to support and provide a home and a safe haven for all the practitioners that want to um, embrace this lifestyle intervention um, to address the metabolic health of, the, of their patients. Um, and I, I was just saying to you that I may, you know, we've, we've made a We've we've done really poorly in in making people understand that they two separate entities. You know that Low Carb USA provides these the um, these conferences and and those sorts of resources, whereas the SMHP provides 
resources for the practitioner and for the public to find them. So there's a provider list where they can go and search for people in their area that, that would be able to help them if they want to embrace this intervention in their lives, um, find low-carb, keto-friendly type doctors. Um, but then, you know, we provide training, we're providing accreditation to them and um, the more and more, we, I think we've got like 60 something um, actual practitioners accredited now, you know, where they can, they've got the special badge they can display, they can display MHP for metabolic health practitioner after their name uh, as a credential. Um, and Pam was just talking to someone else about it just the other day that, you know, we have numerous people um, and one in particular that comes to mind where she actually wrote to us and said, when we, when I wrote to her and said, you know, your accreditation has been approved. She said, you know, this means so much more to me than even when I became a doctor and I got my MD um, because now I feel like I actually have the tool to be able to, to really help my patients. You know, and you, you're a you're a perfect example of that, Brian. Where you, um, you know, for twenty years or whatever before you came across this, you really hadn't managed to help any patients with uh, with cr the chronic diseases and stuff, that especially diabetes and stuff. And since uh, you came to that conference in what was it, 2017, 18, one of those, you know, and you started all of this stuff, you put on that that course that six weeks course at your at your at, at your church and then you started this low carb MD with with uh tro and you've done so much to help further the the knowledge and education um in the space for people and, yeah, and a lot of it was because of yeah, your conference yeah. right when i saw oh my gosh there's all these other people who get it that are helping people and i saw from a neurologic standpoint from a cancer standpoint when right. you sit back and you think wow there's these you know it's so interesting to me i just was listening to an interview with dr seafried you know talking about cancer and low carb mm -hmm. and, and metabolic health and you think wow i mean the impact because he says well for him the side effect is you know the diabetes gets better and the mood gets better but he's treating the cancer and we're treating the diabetes and we see the mood get better and we see all these ripple effects of having a healthier lifestyle. And I think the thing that really brought it to attention for all doctors who are paying attention was the importance of metabolic health in COVID. You know, when you go through a big illness, mm -hmm. we knew who was dying. And, and when you start looking saying, wow, what can we tackle of those things? What, what of those, you know, as Ben Bickman talks about five big things of metabolic health, right? not working yourself and stressing yourself out, which I was doing, getting enough sleep, which I was not doing. Uh, and so I was putting myself at risk just from that. But then it's e eating real food, you know, cut out the processed food, bread, pasta, rice as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Next, don't smoke or drink to excess. Next, exercise regularly. You know, it's not that complicated, but it's those five things. And we have to see what of those five things can we tackle? And that's why I'm excited about your shift too from just saying low carb diet. Yeah, but if you're low carb and you're mad at the world and you hate everyone and you're not sleeping and you're fighting yeah. with your neighbor all the time, it's all a big picture, right? Right. You're not going to get better if, if, if you just change your diet. You have to embrace all the things that that contribute to your to this uh, all the all the lifestyle things that that lead to better metabolic health, which is why we we've kind of instead of calling it low carb USA, uh, it's now called the Symposium of Metabolic Health. Um, so we're moving away from being pigeonholed as just talking about uh, the ketogenic diet as an intervention, but like all the lifestyle changes that are required to be really healthy. Um, and so we we kind of excited about that. It's uh, um, it's happened over the last couple of conferences, but it, people people are writing to us all the time and saying that they really like the, the the change in the in the focus of it and just speaking of that you know for the first time in our, our conference in Boca in January we we kind of focused not the whole conference but at least one day of it specifically on a topic and that particular topic was um uh food addiction car carbohydrate and food addiction 
And so we had a, we actually had a workshop, like a practical workshop the day before the conference even started for the people that could get in early. Um, and then the first, the whole first day was all about crime addiction. And um, that went down really well. And so we've kind of decided like at least until we come up with a better idea that maybe at each conference that we do will have some kind of focus on, on a particular condition. So the, the, the um, San Diego event coming up in August, we've got to focus on cancer. You were talking about Tom Seafried. I mean, he's part of uh, this movie that a uh, couple called Brad and Maggie Jones. I don't know. I did a podcast with them. I think you've done with, I with did, Maggie yeah. as well. Yeah. Incredible people. And, you know, Brad's got a lot of experience with, with movie making. And so they are making a movie that's actually turned into a whole series. I think it's going to be like six parts now or something. Um, and the first part is, is about to be released. Um, so they are coming to our event. They're going to be speaking. Um, we've got Anthony Chafee uh, from Australia. He's actually an American, but he's working in, in, in Australia now. Um, he's going to be speaking about uh, some, some particular aspect of, of cancer. Matt Phillips from New Zealand um, will be there. Nisha Winters, who most people in this, um, in this space are, are very familiar with. Um, Dom D'Agostino. Is um is going to be there. Hopefully, we can get him to to tone it down a little bit so the most the rest of us can can understand what he's talking about. Yeah, he's he's a brilliant guy, and he's he's, he's a really nice guy, and and yeah. so yeah, just seeing people like that who are are invested. He he's done work with the military. He's done a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and you know how do we make our our warriors healthier? And how you know it's just amazing how um how how this is going into all aspects of life and. You know, I, I want to make it clear to people it's it's all a, it's all a cycle too. So, is does everyone have to do low carb? No, there's some people who can work out. They're triathletes and they are they're super metabolically healthy. They have normal insulin, normal A one C, so they could probably liberalize it. But if you're a diabetic, morbidly obese, and you got all these health problems, you got to fix that. You got to be more radical at the beginning, maybe. So, but also realizing, hey, I have to sleep. I have to be stressed. And so, what Doug was talking about with food addiction is a lot of us we get stressed out. We want to eat cookies to calm our nerves or we get you know tired and we want to eat something or we're bored and we want to see what's in the freezer or the fridge. And so that contributes. So when we get the stress level better, guess what? The binge eating gets better. A lot of times when we get life, you know, when you're content with what you're doing, if you're, you have a hobby, you go do things and I've seen it and I've seen the effects of stress and sleep deprivation dramatically in my patients. So I'm excited to talk about that at the conference, but really realizing it's the, that big picture. And that's why we did life's best medicine talking about, okay, let's talk about everything else, but the diet, let's talk about the stress, sleep. How do you deal when everything's terrible around you? How do you survive something like COVID? How do you go through, uh, you know, life traumas? Cause we're all going to be there. And so eating a healthy diet definitely helps you. And I see patients all the time who are going through a life stress right now. And they go said a year ago, I wouldn't be able to handle it, but now I can, because I'm even, I'm not this emotion of, of sugars going up and down and stress and all that kind of stuff. And it's pretty amazing the impact we can make. Yeah, no, absolutely. So the whole first day is going to be focused, all these amazing speakers um, ending up with Brad and Maggie at the end. I don't know exactly yet, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be some part, at least of the first episode that, that we'll get to, to watch during that thing. And then we'll have a panel at the end of that first day, you know, and then the rest of the, of the conference is, is kind of, business as usual, the way we, you know, the way it's been in, in previous years. And we've got Rob Sivis, obviously is, is a, this is pretty much a staple at our events. Like he's so supportive of us. And he's, since I discovered him, he, uh, he's been to pretty much every event that, that we've put on. Um, Dave Feltman is doing this amazing stuff with this clinical trial that he's doing with his lean mass hyper responders. Um, and, He's always hypes it up and he's got some big announcement of the latest bit of data that he's able to publish and talk about, um, you know, as this, as this trial proceeds. Steve Finney has been to many of our conferences and he's back again. Um, Mike Eads, uh, he spoke at our very first event in 2016 and um, 
Mike and Mary Dan Eads have a blog and stuff that I mean he's he's got this huge following. He's and hilarious. Really, he's a hilarious yeah, he, guy, and cool. that's the thing, you know. He, we just kind of I don't know why, but we we kind of lost contact. And just recently in January, we connected again, and he came and spoke in Boca, and he's now coming to speak here again in August. And just as you were saying, just meeting him again reminded me he is the funniest guy ever. Like one of the most intelligent people that you can come across but such an amazing sense of humor and like everything he says is kind of you know um peppered with with some kind of sarcasm or humor in in, in what he says and it's such an entertaining person to to talk to that um i uh, i actually envy the people that get to to sit at the table at dinner with him because that's when he really uh kind of comes into his own like when he's sitting around having those you know those kinds of conversations that happen around the dinner table um i can guarantee you if you're sitting at dinner and you hear a crowd at some table like burst out laughing all the time and you look a bit you uh mike eads will be sitting at that table, at that table you know that's just that's just the way he is um gary Taubes is, is coming back again uh Dr. Mike Hoffman is is actually a neurologist and based in in Florida, who uh, another South African really that um, actually went to the same university as me. He was a couple of years ahead of me. We stayed in the same residence, um, but he was a senior and I was a junior, so I never really got to know him back in those days. But uh, it was really cool to connect with him again, and he's he's done some amazing amazing work as well. He's done a lot of um, training and talks for the Nutrition Network and Noakes Foundation. Um, and so it's a lot of part of a lot of the part of the training that we provide to people who want to try and get accredited on the SMHP side. Um, again, Low Carb USA, SMHP. I happen to be very involved in both, but they are different, different things. We really want to get that concept across to people that uh it's not the same thing. Yeah, and it's important because if, as a practitioner, the biggest frustration I've had and, you know, having the podcast and things, people like, I, as a matter of fact, I was just talking to my office manager yesterday. I have three people flying in from Washington, two from Oregon, just to establish care because they mm -hmm. said, look, I don't trust. I'm one, you know, doc, he goes, I don't trust anyone up here. I just don't. There's no one I trust that I, I work with and I'm, I'm coming down. So wow. but it's crazy. There should be a list where we go, hey, you know what? Don't fly down. There's a great person up there that we can send yeah. to or, well, that's, or in you know, Idaho that's what... or Nevada, wherever it is that we can have good people everywhere that we're all trained the same way and we understand. That's what the provider list on the SMHP is supposed to be for, right? You're supposed to be able to go in and search for someone and find someone in your local area. But that's uh, so it's 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 kind of limited by, by two things. First of all, you know, we're a new organization in a couple of years. And so we have, a, a, a you know, I think like 1200 people or something now in that database, but it's continuously growing as people keep adding their information into it. But at the same time, um, what I'm finding is that people are writing to me and saying like, Hey, I did a research and I didn't find anybody in I in my area. And Every, sometimes it is the case that in that particular area, you know, nobody there either has heard about the SMHP, so they, you know, they, they come put the information in, or there just aren't in people in that area that have embraced this yet. Um, but uh, what was I going to say about this? They, um, when, when, uh, uh, I can't remember. I was going well, somewhere with the with the provider list. Oh, yes, that's what it is. They're saying that they couldn't find people. And when you find, I asked them how they searched. And they said, oh, they, they searched for um, a doctor that has a specialty in neurology um, that is in the city, uh, uh, you know, in the state. And, and what happens is that the, the search engine is only as good as the information that's there, right? So when, it, when somebody joins, they join and it's just their name and their email address. And then they have to go into their profile 
and actually set it all up and just and set up their, their specialities and where they are and blah, 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 all of these different things, all these different criteria that the search engine actually searches on. And what happens is that a lot of the doctors don't go in and fill that stuff up. So if you look for someone in Arizona, but you're asking for someone specifically with that category, then it only is going to search on people that have mm -hmm. that have fulfilled in that category. Yeah, Whereas and really, you, really, so all you that's do what is... I'm trying to encourage people to do is don't start out with a really tight, strict search. Like start out and search on Arizona only, you know, and see what you get, and then you can start um, trying to filter. Yeah, I have to put no, my so Arizona. I haven't done mine. I got to put my information. Yeah, but exactly. the thing is, you can find someone good like Krista Hanks who knows what she's doing. She's going to find the doctor who she's going to work with, right? So that's what's been really cool is there's a lot of good people, Dr. Carrillo, and there's so many down there in, in Arizona that I've met already. Right. So the problem is, you know, sometimes you get a doctor, like if you're looking for a neurologist, for instance, if you have a just a, a internal medicine doc, they'll say, look, here's the neurologist I recommend, or there may be nobody. Yeah. They may say, go to San Diego to find a neurologist who understands low carb, but it, it not everyone has to understand it. You just got to do it. You just got to have someone to guide you yeah. in that, you know? But uh, again, reiterate, do a very wide search, you know, start out in the U S and then just specify a state. And then, you know, worst comes to worst, you literally have to one by one, like go through those people until you find someone that's close enough to you um, that, that would be able to help you. But uh, don't get put off by the fact that you do a really tight search and it doesn't work. And then I, at the same time, I'm constantly speaking to, to people like you and saying, please fill out your profile properly so that people can find you, you know, if they do try to do these strict searches. Yeah, I'll be a good kid. I'll go in and fix yeah, that. Go and, go and fix yeah, because your... things have changed too. And a lot of us are, you know, we're we're seeing the need and we want to fill that need. But, yeah. you know, like for me, that was part of my move to Arizona is that I can open up to 27 states. And from California, they don't reciprocate. But Arizona does with Texas and all these different states. Right. But for me, it's like, hey, if I have a good person in Idaho, I'm not going to get licensed in Idaho because I'll let I'll say, go see that person. Why should I take care of someone in Idaho and the, on their remote? Yeah. So there's a lot of that where we realize the need and and the stuff we're doing with reversing diabetes and putting them in remission and doing, you know, with mood stuff. And so people are seeking us out just for things outside of diabetes, right? Diabetes is the bread and butter for most of us, but there's so much more. And when you get that sugar under control, the mood gets better. The hormones get better. It's, it's incredible what we see. And mm -hmm. it's almost like you don't believe it. It's like the magic pill. You know, when you start seeing it, you go, Oh my gosh, it helps all these conditions, right. you know, from joint pains to headaches to you name it. So why suffer all the time? I, and I look around and see so many people suffering. It's like, man, if they just tweak that a little bit, they'd feel better. You yeah. Know? I mean, it's like, you know, my old say it's sad sub story, you know, with my parents, it's like, um, all the things that they struggle with that I know would be so much more, more improved if they just had to change what they what they ate, but they well, their, plus the people... engineer's son doesn't know anything about medical stuff and nutrition. So why should we listen to him, you know? Well, plus your story of what brought you to low carb, you know, of having head trauma in a car accident mm -hmm. and not being able to focus and concentrate. Now you're running all these things. <laughs> you're doing a ton of stuff that, yeah. you know, you have a lot against you, you know, and you, and you made some lifestyle changes that made a huge difference in, in how you felt and your mental focus. Right. Yeah, no, it, 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 it's, it's just amazing how, and, and like a, a lot of those things, um, I wasn't even expecting when I tried this, you know, it was like so many things, like you're talking about respiratory issues and, skin issues and all sorts of little things that you that you didn't think about and after a while you start to say hey wait a minute like that's you know try a skin patch on my ear that's been there for so long it's just it's, it's cleared up and um you know uh, i was constantly breathing through my mouth because my nose my you know my sinuses were always that swollen that that i couldn't really ever breathe through my through my nose and, you know, that's changed completely. Like I can lie in bed and go to sleep breathing through my nose with my mouth closed. And so I don't wake up feeling like someone died in my mouth the next morning, you know. Um, it, th those kind of, that's quality of life stuff that you don't even think about uh, when you embark on this journey. All awesome bonuses, you know, that 
become apparent as 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 time goes by yeah it's it's really amazing you know especially things like chronic inflammation that we're dealing with of asthma and acid reflux and all these problems that you see them they go it's gone. I don't take down acids anymore. You know, my stomach right. got better. My yeah, exactly. Mood got better. And, and, you know, I think the biggest surprise and the biggest thing, and this is why I talk about it, is mental health. We are in a in a disaster right now with mental health after being locked down, after having mm-hmm. stress. I think we're dying if we breathe air and all these things that we've been through for the last three years. And I've seen a, a huge jump in, in substance abuse, bipolar disorder, major wow. depression, anxiety, panic attacks, poor sleep. And so if we can attack those things, we can do so much better too. And, and we see the, the bend. Now you see people like Georgia Eid and you see people like uh, uh, Chris Palmer right. and Ignacio Carenta and all these people that are really attacking the mental health. They're just, they're looking for, they're, they're not worried about diabetes. They're looking at the mental health aspects. Yeah. Diabetes gets better as a result. So one thing that I've observed as a doc is poorly controlled diabetes, highly correlated with depression. So I didn't know the chicken and the egg, but it turns out the sugars are poorly controlled before the depression comes, right? It's not, and then they, then they really don't care anymore and their sugars go crazy. And then we have all these right. complications of diabetes and all this stuff down, downstream. But, you know, being able to control that. Uh, and then the important critical thing that you're really hitting on is the addiction aspect, because we could read and know everything, but when you're addicted, it doesn't matter how smart you are, you're addicted. You can be an alcoholic and be the smartest person on earth right? Or, or hooked on cookies and be the smartest person. So it's not a, that you're ignorant. It's, it's that you're addicted. Right. Yeah. And no, I think um, the whole addiction piece of it is, is, is so important. And I think, you know, Rob Cybus has been the, the guy that really showed me um, how important it was to, to, to be tolerant of that. You know, when I first started doing this, when I first started Low Carb USA, and um, you know, we were talking to people, and they would say to me, oh, "It's so difficult," and I would, I'd get kind of short with them and say, "It's not rubbish. It's not difficult." Um, but I realize now that I, although I ate so much chocolate and so much crap um, before. I ate it because I enjoyed it, but I wasn't actually addicted to it. So when I changed the way I ate and, and, I, and I was, okay, this is bad for me now, I didn't look back. Not once have I pined for those, you know, like honeycomb malt balls and stuff that I used to have a huge bowl of them next to my seat when we were sitting in the evening watching TV. And I would literally eat them by and handfuls of it um but yeah i chucked i chucked what i had away and i and i've I've never looked back and so i never understood or toler had tolerance for anybody who who didn't find it easy um you know i was able to eat stuff with fat and everything and i just started loving food again and who cares if i can't eat rice and pasta you know the sauces that go on top the meaty sauces and the fatty sauces that go on, on top of those, that's what tastes good. And I can eat that. So who cares? And then, and then Rob came into my life. And, um, you know, being someone that struggles with, with carb addiction very severely, um, he made me understand uh, how important it was what a big thing it was and how important it is that we understand this and try to help people with it. Yeah. And that's what, with Rob, he's talked on a variety of subjects, right. From, you know, he goes, uh, you know, you're like, what are you, I I remember in Boca when I went to that conference and he was talking about mindfulness, you know, calming your nerves and meditating. And I was like, Rob Sivas of all people, he's super intense, Mm -hmm. but you know, I sat down with him after and talked and, and really that was a life changer for me to leave my old practice. Cause I realized like, I can't be stressed and run around like an idiot and have no downtime ever. Right. It has a huge effect on you. You know, when you're just a cog in the wheel and like so many doctors, and that's why I'm so happy with what you're doing too, is I'm telling you, I talk to ER docs all the time and they go, I need out. I can't handle it anymore. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I hate what I'm doing or I'm just overwhelmed all the time and I'm stressed and I'm getting the same things my patients are getting. Cause I'm stressed intense. 
So it's one of those things we start have to reassess. And I think a lot of doctors are jumping out of the system. And part of it's low carb MD. We've had an impact because people listen and go, you know, maybe yeah. if these guys, and we wanted to show, and, and there's another important thing that uh, Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners, <clears throat> Low Carb USA, you, you've really said, hey, we have to change the standard of care. We have to turn this food pyramid upside down. We got to do, we have to make it the standard. And, and the reason we started Low Carb MD was if there's only five of us doing it, we have a huge target. If we have 50,000 doctors doing the same thing with great outcomes, we, all we can do is show our outcomes in our data. And we have the data now because Tro's done a great job of, of keeping data and doing studies and, and, and right. showing it. Not just a case report saying, hey, this guy, you know, his diabetes got better. But when you say, hey, look, here, here's, you know, 80 people, 1,000 people that are having been Verta came along and, and did all the science for us, too, to say, hey, this works. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're all kind of saying the same thing uh, with Finney. And then the other thing, Doug, that the other person who's really been critical is Ben Bacchicchio, right? Yeah. What he's doing, I know he's speaking, and uh, uh, it, it's really amazing when you realize, when I start, when we started low carb, I think at that first conference, no one talked about exercise. No. You go, just change your diet and everything will be better. And this is what we're looking at, metabolic health. Exercise is a part of that. And it might be just for stress relief, right? And, and so when you look at the data on, on exercise, it doesn't really make a difference in weight loss. But what it does is help with maintaining weight loss. So people right. who exercise, once they lose their weight or, or their exercise or they stay consistent with that, and it might be just because people who exercise are more diligent and they're going to be more diligent about what they eat too. But exercise plays a huge role in emotions, mood, oxytocin levels, lowering the stress hormone, lowering insulin, it does a ton of stuff. And it's like, okay, if I could have a pill for that, I'd be a multimillionaire and retire for what exercise does. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, and, and the other thing that, you know, with, with Ben's uh, exercise regimen, uh, you know, the fact that he's talking about doing 15 minutes twice a week, anybody can find 15 minutes twice a week. It's just, there's no excuse for not doing it. And it is so beneficial that... Um, that yeah, everybody should be doing it. It's it's uh, he's been a revelation as well. Also, since since we discovered him, uh, he's kind of been at pretty much all our all our conferences since then as well. Because it's so important to include this exercise component in in the thing. Uh, and like you said, it's it, it's not about using exercise to lose weight. It's about um, using exercise to especially Ben's form of exercise where it actually activates the same um, metabolic pathways that that the ketogenic diet does and so it works in 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 tandem with with the diet to to reinforce it um, and uh, you know it, it that is that it's so important to and like you said you, you've got the um, the psychological effects and the, the, the stress relief and those sorts of things that are kind of intangibles that you can't you can't see the, the actual effect of it. But down the road, when the person finds that they're in a better place, and so they're they're not driven to go back to the car binging and stuff that they used to do before. Once they because that's what happens. People get their, their whatever diet they use, whether it's ketogenic diet or anything else. Um, they get down to where they to where they want to go, and then they'd say, "Our oh, ketogenic diet doesn't work. Look, I put all of this weight back on." It's like, but if you stop doing it and you start eating all the crap again, what do you expect? You didn't yeah, put a, yeah, you didn't exactly. put weight on just randomly. You put weight on because of the crap you were eating. So if you go back to eating that crap, you're going to put the weight back on. Well, but they blame yeah. the, the ketogenic diet for not working because they don't do it anymore. But yeah, it's like, once it's you do like, exercise, better, sorry, bro, yeah. Brian, but like, so once you're doing a bunch of exercise and your stress levels come down and everything come, becomes suddenly so much easier to say, okay, well, let's just keep doing this. You're in a better place. You feel, you feel good. And so you think, okay, like, let's, let's keep this going. Well, then it switches where you exercise because you feel like exercise, you enjoy it, not because you're like right. trying to lose weight or saying, oh, I eat cookies, actually, so I got to go work out harder. And right, it's like, exactly. When people feel better, they want they go, let's go for a hike instead of having dinner. Let's go. Let's go and do something more active. And so when people are more active, their mood gets better. And then they're around people who are more positive. And when you're on a hiking trail, everyone's friendly. 
Right. Yeah, you pass someone, they say hi. They don't say, hey, what's your political party? Hey, what, what's your religion? No one cares. They're like, you're enjoying the day. I'm enjoying the day, right? You connect with people so much. And that's one thing I've noticed. And when you're out doing stuff, people are, are smiling and happy and they're out like enjoying life, right? And so, mm -hmm. so many of us are just sitting in a cubicle all day and we're under, under these, you know, imitation lights. We don't get out. We don't. And that's what this whole thing of metabolic health is understanding. If you're you know, 500 pounds, you can't just go out for a walk in the wilderness, right? It's too hard. And so what I see is a lot of people as they get older, they don't think about it. And then it's too late and you can't get out of your bed and you're sitting in a wheelchair and you can't exercise and you're hurting all the time. And so sometimes just doing the dietary stuff will help you get to a point where you can exercise and be active. I have a kid in my practice and I, I'm sure you've met him along the way at our meetings and he's, he's lost about 200 pounds, but now he's jogging again. Like that was his dream. He's jogging oh, wow. and he's put on 25 pounds of muscle. So in the last nine months, I think he's lost four pounds, but he's put on 25 pounds of muscle. That means he's lost like 29 pounds of fat, wow. right? And he's a totally different breed. You look at him. Plus, not only that, he's engaging with people before he was very closed off. He's engaging, sharing his story, sharing his experience because he's, he's not in this cage anymore. He's free yeah. and he wants to help other people along the journey because we're all suffering, you know, yeah. to some degree. I mean, I, I've even heard that, that you were a bit like that, weren't you? That you were much more reserved and, uh, <laughs> and quiet um, before, yeah. before you discovered this. Um, well, I'm reserved. I remember, but, I remember yeah. your wife, it was one of the San Diego meetings, local San Diego meetings that we had. And like you were afterwards, you were in the corner and you were jabbering away to everybody. And uh, she, she was talking to Pam myself and she said something like, like, who is that guy? What have you done with my husband? You know, um, she, 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 I think she was, she was like bursting with just seeing how passionate you were and, and how just the zest for life and stuff that she obviously hadn't seen when you were struggling in that, in that, practice of yours before before you oh, found this. yeah when you're stressed and running around all the time the last thing you want to do is make small talk with people like you're thinking of all this stuff you got to do you don't have time for small talk yeah. and so i remember that we, you know one day i sat there and i'm a pretty compassionate guy and this one of my co-workers you know she's older and one of the receptionists she wanted to show me pictures of her grandkids and i was thinking you know what Dear Lord, I got so much. I, I have good time. 30 people to call back i got to, i'm not getting home till 8 30 i'm gonna look at your grandkids for 10 minutes I don't really care. At yeah. that point, I was like, what? what kind of person doesn't even care about someone's, you know, the love of their life? And then right. you start realizing, oh, man. And that's why, you know, this whole thing of slowing down a little bit, enjoying the day, going out and, 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 you know, sitting on the beach and doing nothing for a little while for us. When Rob was talking about that, you know, and that's why it impacted me. I started getting stressed out and I'm not a stress guy. Mm. I started realizing, man, if I waste time spending time with my family or spending <laughs> spending time with friends, I'm thinking about all the stuff I got to do and I shutting down for two days, forget it, man. I'll never catch up. And I'll, I, it was like on a being on a treadmill too fast. And so many people, uh, you know, would tell me that like, Brian, like, I haven't seen you. We haven't talked in a year and a half. Like I thought we were friends, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing is like, well, heck by the weekend I'm recovering, I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't, I just want to be on my couch and do nothing. So yeah, you start realizing the impact of that chronic stress and sleep deprivation. And that's why I want to talk about it at this conference, because I see it in patients all the time. And the craziest thing, Doug, I see it over. I have a guy who just got back from Europe. He went to Europe. He, he left at 267 pounds. He comes back and we we're talking. He's 241. I said, wait a minute. You mean 261, 271? He goes, no, 241. I go, how can he be 241? You lost 25 pounds? Yeah. What'd you do? I just walked. I wasn't staring at my refrigerator all day. He's retired now. Mm -hmm. And just going for little walks, he goes, I, I got some cheese and meat. And I sat in the park and I talked to people and I didn't eat like cookies every night. And I lost 25 pounds. He goes, I wasn't even trying. <laughs> right. But then he came back and gained 10 pounds right away. So we go, okay, we got to fix some of this stuff. So you start realizing, you know, when you slow down the stress and you just are sometimes and not like have to conquer the world and get that new Ferrari or whatever it is, people do better. Right. When they realize what really matters. And that's what both of these podcasts hopefully come across to people saying, look, you can eat a perfect ketogenic diet and be upset and not sleep and be stressed and fight with everyone. And you're going to struggle. It's just the way it is. It's those stress hormones, cortisol, insulin, you know, all this kind of stuff where that we're at battle with. So, OK, how do I lower those things? 
right? And so sometimes it's just sitting with a friend like you and talking like this. <laughs> I, I like this. My I'm sure my stress hormones and cortisol and everything gets better just sitting here talking to you. Right, yeah. Yeah, that I could be of service. <laughs> Yeah, no, but you are. I mean, what you're doing is a huge thing because the hardest thing, as you know, is bringing doctors together, right? Mm -hmm. We couldn't even get Troy to join us today because it's hard to rope in doctors and practitioners and healthcare workers. And probably some of the sickest people I know are healthcare workers because they're stressed and tense and worried and their lifestyle sucks. And when they say, oh, I'm going to try doing this and they start doing low carb. And that's why it's so fun for me at conferences uh, to sit and talk to a doctor who's like, you know, they're, they're there with their husband or wife. And they're like, we need out. We can't, mm -hmm. like, our, we're struggling because the stress being under constant stress is not good for anyone, right. you know? And so acute stress, you get stressed and we got to pay our bills. We got to do this. That's fine. Cause you got to do those things. But when you're under a stress and you're in conflict all the time, I've seen the impact and it's unreal. It's unreal on the physiology of people, you know? So I think being able to sit back and, and the other thing is the critical importance of community. Right. And so when people go to a low carb conference, it changes them because they just go, I'm not the oddball. Look, everyone is putting heavy whipping cream in their coffee and everyone's going for a walk at night or whatever. <laughs> and, and you're not the only one. And, and in our practice, we build community and it's a huge deal. Like people help each other and they love to help each other because once you've hit, you know, if you're an ex alcoholic and you got your life together and everything is great now, you want to help other people out. There's a, like what you were saying, my wife, why my wife's saying that I was not. Uh, like, oh, because if I'm at a dinner party and someone wants to talk about their hemorrhoids, that's not exciting. But if they go, Hey, <laughs> I'm trying to get my diabetes under control. And I realized the law, like I got all night to talk to you. Right. right. And, and so she's like, Oh no, they're going to ask about low carb with their cancer <laughs> or whatever it is. And I love it because I know I can help you. If I say, yeah, I put this cream on twice a day. It's not really helping you. Cause <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just holding down the symptoms. Mm -hmm. So when we start looking at root causes, Ivor Cummins, we'll talk about, and you know, what, oh, what, um, uh, Dave's doing, you know, with, with the cholesterol and you start looking at it clinically. The reason I get excited is because I see it happening clinically. You could tell me all you want. And if I try it with my patient, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. If you tell me this is the best drug, Vioxx is the best drug, but all my patients are having heart attacks. I go, wait a minute, this isn't very good. I got to change what I'm doing. Right. So that's the problem is most docs are trained by pharma. That's the reality. And if you don't, and, and they say, you have to have this drug, you have to eat this terrible food. And we have a drug to fix the sugars. Like, well, how about if we just change your lifestyle and you don't need that drug that makes you pee out more sugar. You won't have to pee out more sugar because you won't have that much sugar in your system. So when people get that concept, they come off meds, you know, it's amazing mm -hmm. to see deep prescribing too. That's the other thing from your conferences, you know, Mark Kukazella, I think he's speaking also, right? He is coming. Yeah. 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 He's talking specifically, um, so more we could because he's a sports guy and a runner and all of that. His talk's going to be um, more focused on on exercise and sports stuff as well. Um, but he, yeah, I mean, it was in Boca either this year or last year or whatever. He his talk was really about bullying, and and since then he's actually left his his university and the, the university hospital. Um, because of, of the way he was being treated. And um, it, it was like, by the end of his talk, like, it, like everyone was just like sitting there looking around because you could see that, that even though he was describing a general kind of pattern, you could see that it, was, it had severely affected him and it was... It was kind of difficult to watch almost just to see the pain that 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 he was in. You know? And he was helping when he helped people, he was getting that. And he he yeah, showed I mean, better numbers and having better outcomes, and they're still treating you bad because you're not going with what they want you to do. So so I mean, you know the story about um what he had um sugar basically from his little hospital, he had it removed. So all the Cokes and stuff like that, uh, Gatorade, all those things were the, the vending machines and that were removed from the hospital so that you could you could get water and and sort of non-sugary stuff. But you and then it was like everybody bragged about it in our community, like it was like such a big win, you know. Now and then the next step is all the hospitals will do that, but like all the people in the hospital fought back and. 
and they had the the, the decision reversed. Yeah, and they go for and, and when it was day, reversed, and, have... the, and the machine yeah. machine came back. He had a picture in one of his talks, I think, in San Diego. Yes, yeah. Where we there's a there, someone had taped a big sign on there that said "Sugar is back" with a bunch of happy faces and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you start looking at that, and you go, "Well, are they going to really, do better?" That's so depressing, man. Jeez. Like, yeah, and that's what's hard. He worked so hard to get that happen, but then yeah. you realize, oh, the hospital has contracts with these companies, and they have to stick to the contracts yeah, and make I, money. And, you know, you realize that your your best health is not an interest. And so there's so much of that. And, you know, and and getting back to the passion thing, you know, I was just listening to Thomas Seafried, who I have an interview because I'm intimidated because he's such a brilliant guy. But he's, he's a great, cool guy with a great mm -hmm. sense of humor and everything. 77 years old, still going. Prof Noakes, I don't even know how old he is, but this yeah, guy man. will never stop until he dies. Right. Because he loves it. He's passionate. He's He's not afraid to jump in the battle. But yeah. he has common sense and he has clinical experience and he's, you know, the, one of the most published guys in the world. And you look at him and go, he has a passion. He's still doing it. He could have backed down. Like we want to be here talking probably right now if he backed right. down. Right. And Gary yeah. Fedke and all these heroes. And, and this is for people who've never been to a low carb conference or a, a metabolic health conference. It is really eye opening for me. I'm sitting next to like some of the biggest names and they're all like, Hey, Brian, how are you? And like really Ben Bigman, the first time I met him, I was like, Oh my gosh, what a nice guy. He's a good guy. You know, it's not like he's up on stage and gives a talk and leaves like most medical conferences or, you know, you're not worthy to stand in my shadow type thing, but there's so much of that. And you can say, Hey, whatever. My uh, Rob Saib is, you know, I have a question and he'll sit there and talk to you in the back, you know, or, or just going to dinner and talking to people, the great conversations. And, you know, I've been there and just looking at like, okay, I'm sitting here. I got Rob Saib is, I got, um, uh, you know, some of these big, huge names, like, you know, Dom Agostino, and they're discussing something and you go, oh my gosh, just being a fly on the wall, Doug, you know, we've seen these discussions yeah. like, wow. But then Bikikio talking from an exercise standpoint, someone else is talking about from a neurologic standpoint and they go, oh, we all agree amazing it's amazing to see yeah. yeah no it is incredible so maybe um hopefully some people listening to this have decided that they'd like to come and see you speak about sleep and stress in august um so at the moment i don't know when this is going to air but up until the 4th of july we've got a 15 percent uh discount running and there'll probably be about a 10% discount running from then onwards. But if you use the code low carb MD, and I think we've uh, life's best medicine too, either one, um, they can get 20% off and it's off your cart, right? So if you order the dinners, if you order a CME certificate, it, it takes that discount off the, off your total, not just off the, the ticket price. Okay, low carb MD or life's best medicine. It doesn't matter if it's capitalized or not. No. Uh, All right. I normally do it with a capital for each word just to make it more legible, but you can put it in any way you want. Yeah. And, and, you know, for my patients, I always recommend it, you know, because it makes my job as a doctor so much easier, right? Because you think I'm going to explain cancer better than the cancer experts? Yeah. I can't. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't have the experience in that area, but I know it helps. But to have people talk about their patients and, and so every aspect of health, if you're interested in health, I think this is it. San Diego is the best, you know, and Boca. I mean, they're, they're great conferences. So I think just coming out and even if you just care about cancer or you you have a family member, it's nice to have the most knowledge you can and see what's happening clinically. The cancer revolution is, is just amazing what they're doing. And her story, I, I was blown as a doctor. I'm blown away because it's like, man, that's the scariest diagnosis you can get, probably dementia. And we have tools of help with dementia. And we have tools of uh, help with cancer. But those are the two big scary ones, you know, uh, that we, none of us want to get dementia. So mm -hmm. you go, okay, how do I, what, I might have some genetic predisposition, but what can I do? Instead of just saying, this is a chronic progressive disease, you're going to get it. Here's what's going to happen. And you're, you're, you're not going to be able to put your shoes on someday. Um, you know, there's stuff we can do with, with diabetes management. And so, when people get educated, uh, they do so much better. And also they'll come back to me with questions. Go, Hey, this person, you know, Michael Eats says this, what do you think? You know, because there's always the other good thing is there's not everyone's drinking the same Kool-Aid at some point. We, we, you know, Rob may have a different opinion than me on fat intake or, or lean protein. We've seen that over time. 
So, you know, seeing the, the paradigm shift and, and open minded people like Professor Noakes, who will say, oh, uh, yeah, we, we need to tweak this a little bit. Let, let's let's make this change and see what happens. And not just saying this is what I said 20 years ago, so I'm sticking with it. Right. The arrogance that is is so entrenched in medicine. You don't see that at these conferences. And that's why it's cool that you could just approach and talk to people and, you know, get get their two cents. And so it's always like a family reunion for us when we all get together. Yeah, no, it's a. Uh... Um, it's like when 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 it comes to an end, it's almost like bittersweet, you know. It's like it's kind of a relief that that the, all the drama is over and it's it's all it's done. But uh, it's always really sad to know, you know, to, to realize that everybody's going home and that that excited environment that that has existed for those four days. Um, is you're not going to be experiencing that you get up tomorrow morning like I get up the day after the conference and come down the elevator into the lobby and like all the vendor stuff is gone and maybe they've been setting up for some other random conference or whatever and uh, I mean and a couple of the times in San Diego we've come down and 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 literally um, they were setting up for the next meeting which was um selling diabetes meds like after we'd had this four days there was a the, the next company that was doing a conference in the hotel was uh was was selling all these um diabetes meds and uh <laughs> Pam like walked into the thing. It's like she's had her arms folded like this, and she's looking at all these posters and stuff. And she's like looking for someone to fight to fight with, you know. Um, yeah, it's frustrating it's as of, a doc. Kind of you sad, know, yeah. you see it. You know, you can see the the difference. Yeah. And and you know, the other thing is the other the other reason I love the conferences is we'll run into people and hear their stories. Right, some of our guests from Low Carb yeah. MD and Life's Best Medicine is from the conference because it's like. What's your story? Oh, you know what? I was in bed two years ago. I couldn't walk, and here I am now. And you go, wow. There's nothing like that, you know. No. And you're not going to hear someone say, "Yeah, I was in bed two years ago, and then I shot this drug up, and then I got better." Right? No, it, exactly. It, it, then, it's uh, yeah. You, oh, it, it, like you, like I said, that's what's so sad. It's like you start to realize, like you've been immersed in this environment with all these stories going on around you for four days, and now suddenly it's all going to evaporate, and that's that's. It's always a bit sad, but well, and, and it's no one's saying metabolic health doesn't. It, it, it's an effort. You got to mm -hmm. make an effort. You got to make some changes. You got to look at life differently, and and that's that whole thing of sitting back and taking a breath and reassessing and saying, "Am I happy where I'm at?" You know, I can't walk up the hill with my family and I have to sit in the car. You know, those kind of things. You want people, and I see people that they got their life back. You know, and they're in their 80s, and all of a sudden they're as fit as they were when they were 50. Mm -hmm. You know, or even better than they're like I should have done this 30 years ago. I, I wasted my life. You know, so those are great things. When you know, I've I have people in their late 70s come to me and let's do this thing, and they're ready to go, and they and they do great. And all the tools and all the stuff we've learned, it, it's amazing that we can really, really help people. So, Doug, I have to ask you, since we're doing this on both podcasts, what's what's life's best medicine for you? What gets you going? What gets you motivated? Where do you go to when things are kind of rough? Where do I go when things are kind of rough? Um, I was thinking about that the other day. And um, I don't know, man. It's like, I think going back to 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 some of the testimonials, you know, like when, um, and when things are going rough for me, it's like when stuff's really difficult, or it's you know, I don't know, like the conference is not coming together, or or, or whatever. But then we go back to um, to like the stories that you were talking about. Like it's just, we got so many now, where people will talk about how coming to that conference changed their lives, you know, saved their lives a lot, a lot of time. Um, and that, that renews my in inspiration my, to, to, to come back and get up again and start doing that, you know. That whole thing about it's not about getting knocked down, it's about whether you get back up again, you know, and with what attitude you get back up again. Um, 
And I find that, and I always encourage people, if you've got a story, like send it to us because it really does help us to get back up again with the right attitude when we get knocked down, you know? Um, yeah, it helps someone else along the way too. When yeah. someone else is struggling with that condition, you go, look, here's someone else's story. Here, let's connect you with them and exactly, let them tell yeah. you what they did, you know, yeah. how they overcame breast cancer or how they overcame different things and how they use it as an adjunctive to chemotherapy and radiation, whatever. So, you know, and, and again, you know, I think minimizing medication use, uh, you know, whatever we can do lifestyle wise. And again, having all these people under one roof that you could say, oh, I'm interested in exercise. I'll talk to Ben. I'm interested in cancer. I'm interested in mental health. And so there's people there that you can, if you're struggling with that, they can, they can help you with that struggle, you know? Mm. So it's amazing to see. And, you know, I'm really excited about the conference. I'm honored to be able to speak again. And, uh, uh, yeah. you know, I think it's, it's just a great, it, it's a great time. It's a lot of fun. You learn, but there's always fun at night. Everyone's sitting around talking and having a good time getting to know people that maybe you're intimidated by. And, and, uh, then you say, well, they're really a nice person, you know, once you get to know them. So, yeah, I think it's really great. Plus just building community. People will say, oh, you're from Idaho. So am I, let's do something when we get back, you know, and we see people building their own communities, like in Arizona, they, you know, from low carb uh, meetings that they, they, they go back and they start a community there. And now I already have a community that I can join. That's, that's close by. So, mm -hmm. you know, all those kind of things and meeting nice people and you seeing their integrity and, and that they want to help people and that you can work together and not give conflicting, you know, uh, advice. And that's, what's hard is the doctor says one thing, they go to the cardiologist, they say something else. The neurologist says something different. And you're like, okay, look, here's the data. That's all I can do is show you that. Um, so it's amazing when you have like, everyone's on the same page mm -hmm. and they're, they're not getting criticized all the time by their healthcare person saying they're killing themselves when all their numbers are getting better. Yeah. You know, you know, we, we, uh, <clears throat> we originally kind of started this the idea of giving people a, a place to come to at least for a couple of days where they were exactly what you say where they are they're in in with like-minded people and they're not being attacked by their doctors and their family members and their friends and that for trying to do this um to to make them healthier you know um but what we realized a couple of years in was that it was even more important for the doctors and the uh, the other practitioners, the nutritionists and the RDs that, that I mean, the RDs that try to do this are, are, are really persecuted. Um, and to provide them with a safe place to come and be able to have these discussions and talk excitedly about it without getting shut down um, by their peers and colleagues. Um, even more importantly, it, it, it provides that for the doctors and, and the other practitioners there, um, which is always really cool to see that they, um, yeah, like, you know, yeah, really, and I, it's I'm so telling, sad that they get, that they get yeah. treated so badly, you know, um, yeah. And the RDs, I'm telling you when they, when they, when they start seeing results, uh, us mm -hmm. docs want to see results. So I don't send people for diabetes education where I, my results were terrible every time. They're eating six meals a day, tons of carbs, and their sugars are crazy, and they're shooting more insulin. It's like, do you want to do that, or do you want to go to this registered dietitian who does what she's talking about? And then they get better, and their sugars are better, and they're like, I'm off my meds. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Like, this is great. That's what we love to see. It's amazing how, as docs, we get paid more to give more meds in the system. And I, you know, I earned my keep by getting you off your meds. And saving you a little copay here and there, you know, that kind of, you know, people don't realize yeah. how expensive these drugs are, you know? Right. So anyways, Doug, I'm excited about all you're doing. I'm excited. Um, well, thanks, Brian. I, you know, I mean, honestly, I feel like you and Tro have done more than I have done in this space, but um, at least I can say that uh, the trigger was the event that you came to um, that got you it really got you going on this. Um, so I, Pam and I are more thankful to you and Tro for what you've done than any of you guys could be for us. But, but yeah, we all impact We all cross paths for a reason. We all impact each other, right? Yeah. People listen to this or say, hey, I'll go to the conference, try it out. Then they end up leading huge small groups. And I have people who have evangelized their entire community. They go up there and I have an, a 78-year-old lady 
She changed her life, reversed her diabetes. She got her son off alcohol. She did all this stuff. And they go, wow, one person, one person. And that's what you see too. These stories of one person goes, hey, this is working. Let me try it with you. And so I have so many people that are referring their family members and cousins and uncle and the guy they work with that has sugar out of control. And some people are ready, some people aren't, but the people who are committed, they crush it. And it's amazing to see. And it's like, for me, and it's a crazy thing, the sicker you are when you come to me, the more happy I am. Cause I know I go, Oh, we could fix that. Oh yeah. We could do that. We could do that. We, I know. And, and people get better. And that's when, if, if you're pretty healthy already, it's not as dramatic, but if you're really eating fast food four times a day, when I hear that, I go, Oh man, this is going to be great. Like I know what's going to come for you. Right. Mm -hmm. Because just making little changes there here and there. And, getting Ben's workout in and we know the tools now that can help us. So it's awesome. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Everyone, hey, Doug, when's the, the dates of it? Is it, it's August uh, so it's 17. 17 to 20 um, of August. In San Diego, there's places you can walk to down by the beach right there. Yeah, no, I mean, the hotel nice. is like right there on the bay. Um, so whole new complex they've built across the road with a bunch of new restaurants and, and stuff like that, you know, sign up for the dinners and, and come and get the chef works really hard to, to provide really good keto diet dinners and quite even there's a carnival option even as well. Yeah, and we have, to, C CGMs to, steak. we have CGMs to double check those guys too, so. Oh, yeah, so that's, that's, <laughs> that, that's happened. I mean, we, we even did that in Boca this year. Um, we went and they wanted to, to try the desserts because we had complaints from the year before. And we literally went in a, a few days early wearing CGMs and they, the chef brought us the, the different uh, desserts. And we ate a dessert and sat and watched my CGM stats over a half hour. And then I ate the other one and we watched it again and I ate the third one. And it just like started shooting up. Yeah, it's amazing. I, my two biggest spikes this week that I've seen was from uh, zero sugar vanilla frozen yogurt and boba, sugar-free boba, because the, the little boba have sugar and it's tapioca sugar, right? So you realize, yeah, oh, it's if, amazing. Though, that's why the CGM is so great. Yeah. So we'll, we'll talk about that at length at the conference. So yeah. Awesome stuff, man. And and again, how do people get to the website to, to track you down? And All right. So uh, lowcarbusa.org. Uh, and then if you in the main event, in the main um, menu bar, the white menu bar, one of the options is events. And the drop down will show, you know, the next San Diego event, our Boca event coming up in January. And then a, a list of the videos and CMEs that are still available for some of our previous events, but the top one in the, in the drop down is the San Diego event. And are you going to live stream it again? We are live streaming it as well. So there's an in-person and a live stream option and the live stream people can, can still um, order and request a, a CME certificate as well. If it's something that they will need. Awesome stuff. Yeah. All right, and and the 20% gets you 20% off whichever option you choose. Awesome. And, uh, you have some work to do. I know that's a stressful time for you getting ready for these conferences and getting everything dialed in and yeah. speakers. And so stay, stay yeah, well, it's, man. It's, 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 but the stress is really building up to it. You're making sure everything is, is, is right and done by the time we get there. Uh, normally everything's in place. And so then, then I just got to make sure they put out the little fires and stuff and keep it going, you know, but it's, it's not as stressful as, as well. And I'll tell you, you know, one thing I'll tell you, you know, I've spoken at a few places and your, your IT guys, the AV guys are just oh, they do. top notch, great guys. And you know, things are going to work and not get up there and go, oh, my clicker doesn't work. This is, that's the worst thing that can happen, you know, yeah. but you run on time. The speaker schedule is good, you know, unless, unless, uh, I'm trying to think of what's his name that, that, you know, sometimes he'll have 3000 slides, you know, and you're like, oh, oh. Um, <laughs> but he's great. Uh, he's great. I love it. But you know, it happens. So anyways, you do a good job of keeping us in line and making sure Rob and I don't ask too long of questions and all that stuff, but yeah, it's a fun time. I'll try to, I'll try to be on good behavior this yeah, time. Behave yourself, man. All right. Okay. Take care, Doug. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers, mate. Bye. Bye. Pam. Thanks. We'll do.
Thank you for listening to this episode. We greatly appreciate your support. We would greatly appreciate a positive thumbs up on all of the platforms like uh, iTunes and uh, Spotify or wherever you're listening. And we just thank you for our Patreon supporters. Uh, We greatly appreciate your help in getting this message out. We think there's a lot of important information. And uh, hopefully this helps you. You Have a great day. And thank you for listening. And thank you for your support. Thank you.